Good morning. It's Denise with Gemini Homestead. I said yesterday when I did a walk through the garden, I was going to do a short, and it will be short, uh, little video. And this is uh, to shout out to Miss Addie Broussard. Um, she has her own little channel, Abby's Kitchen. And I guess about, I don't know, two or three months ago, she asked me for a biscuit recipe. So I attempted to send pictures and a text to her. That failed, miserably failed. You don't wanna see me write a recipe and a text. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do this video. I'm gonna dedicate it to her. And I hope this helps you, Abby. So let's get started. Okay, y'all, let's get to making some biscuits. We have one cup of whole milk. I added a teaspoon of vinegar about 20 minutes ago. I don't keep buttermilk in the house, so when I want buttermilk, I just add a teaspoon to a cup. Some people add a tablespoon, but I found that it's just a little bit too wangy for our taste. Um, so this is just a cup of whole milk and a teaspoon of vinegar. You do not have to add the vinegar. You can use whole meat, whole milk. I've actually used half and half a lot of times. Last Sunday I made biscuits. I was low on milk, so I used half and half. So there's one cup cold milk, one stick of diced salted butter, and I cut my pieces up. Let me find the camera about this size. I have the camera down low just so y'all can see what I'm doing. And then we're going to have flour. So we're going to add two cups of self-rising flour. Very, very simple. Now this bowl y'all see me using, that was my daddy's potato salad bowl. Uh, my dad was born in 1920. He had this bowl since the 40s and I was blessed to get it. So that's going to be two cups of self-rising flour. I'm using a, a half a cup measure. Look how old that measure is. I wouldn't trade it for the world. And if it looks like you've got too much flour, it's not a big deal. You know, it's biscuits is really easy. All right, so there's two cups of self-rising flour. We're going to close this up. Ooh, did y'all see that puff of flour? I'll dispose of this. Now, this is just my biscuit spoon. It's old, it's been broke, but it's an old skinny wooden spoon. You can probably get these at probably the Dollar Tree, I don't know. I only use this for making biscuits. And what I'm gonna do is, I made me a little hole, and I'm gonna dump my butter. Now remember, that's one cup of diced salted butter. I forgot one thing, hold on just a minute. A pastry cutter. I found that this works the best. And all I'm gonna do is cut the butter. Now, I'm not trying to cut it to where you don't see the butter. I'll show y'all a little piece, because all I'm doing, if y'all can see, I'm just kind of working it around the bowl. And I'll lightly tap it, and I'll take my fingers and try to get it off. I'm not gonna completely flatten this cold butter. I still want pieces of butter, because that's what's gonna make your biscuits good but I am breaking it up. And I'll show y'all in just a minute. This literally takes less than three minutes total. Of course, I can do this in my sleep. And, and again, now this is old, but y'all can find these things, I'm sure at a dollar store, Walmart, they can't be more than two bucks. I'm sure they make quality ones, but this one's always done me fair. Okay. So, can y'all see that there's still little pieces of butter? It's, it's still got little pieces of butter. I'm trying to go slow so y'all can see that. Normally I don't play in the flour, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna make a little hole. What a mess. Y'all do know this is my first cooking video. And all I did was pour my cup of homemade buttermilk. And I'm just going to spin this around, hoping the camera's catching it. You don't want to 
overwork. In other words, you want a light hand. Heavy hand makes heavy biscuits. Light hand makes light biscuits. But it looks like I'm really working it, but I'm not. I'm just trying to absorb most of the moisture. And I'm folding it as I go. That's why I like this metal bowl. It seems to turn easy. There we go. It's getting just like I want it. Now y'all are thinking, man, that's a sticky mess. No, you want it kind of sticky. Okay. Now, there you go. And I'll show you how sticky it is. See, it just, it's wet, but it's holding together. All right, now, I'm going to hit pause. We're going to move to the next step. I feel like this is the easiest way to show y'all is by the two steps. So let me hit pause, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I cleaned up the little bit of mess. Now you're looking at a rolling pin, and this was my mama's rolling pin. Now, it's a hot mess, but I've yet to find one that rolls like this. But what you see is I've got a little bit of self-rising flour, and I've got wax paper. The only reason I use wax paper is for cleanup, and, and that's the only reason. Um, it just makes for it a little bit easier cleanup, but it's not a necessity. I've got some extra flour here. Now, before we do the next step, let me show you. This is like a quiche pan. Um, this is just my biscuit pan. I, I just like it. I, I mean, you can use anything you want. I just found that this thin aluminum, it seems to cook biscuits without burning. It makes them even. Of course, now this is old, but you can find these probably at yard sales. But anyway, all I did was, you see it's greasy, just old vegetable sharpening. Any brand, this happens to be a, a Brookshire brand from our local supermarket. So, got my grease pan, got my floured surface. Now we're gonna dump this gooey mess. Now I'm trying to go slow so y'all can follow me, especially you, Abby, because this was intended for you, honey. And I think you're gonna master this. You're fixing to make a lot, a lot of people happy, Abby. Okay, pretty much got all I wanna get out of there. I'm gonna set this over to the side. I don't mind the mess because I know what's going to come out of it. But like I say, I'm moving a little slow because I want to be able to let y'all follow me. All right. And you see, we got just this glob. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to dust the top so I can work it. This, is, this can go really fast once you get the technique down. Now this is where the wax paper is going to come in. You see, I've added some flour so I can actually form it a little bit with my hands. But this is gonna be what I'm pressing my flour and dough with. And you can tell if you need to add more flour because the paper's gonna stick. It's almost like a, a sheet. And I'm gonna fold this dough over. And I always go, I'm left-handed, but I go left to right like I'm folding a taco, I guess is the best way. Now this is gonna stick just a hair right there, see? So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna pat it down. Now, I'm fixing to come in from the top to the bottom. Now I'm gonna do this like eight times because what I'm trying to do is put layers in my biscuits. Because when you have layers in there, it just, they come apart so easy. Now you can make just what they call a flat caveat biscuit where you don't put the layers in. I personally prefer the layers. Or some, I think it's in a can called flaky biscuits. All right, we're going to go back to this other side. Now, you see there's a little bit of flour on the counter, but not like if I had nothing underneath this dough. Okay, see now, see how that got sticky there? Because I need to add some flour. It basically will talk to you. And it looks like I've got a heavy hand, but I really, really don't. Okay, perfect. Now, we're going to go back. Fold it again. Now, this is our second time. So, when we get through with this, that's going to be what? Eight times. Okay. A little sticky right there. 
going to be just fine. All right. This is number six. Because you remember the first time we did four corners. Now, see, I missed my little paper right there. So I'm going to tuck him in, which is probably too late. But still, hardly no flour on the counter. And we're going to fold it back over. There's a good piece of dough. I don't want to lose that. Tuck that in there. And this is all that I'm doing. All right, we got one more fold. Now, straighten this up because we're fixing to put that rolling pin on it. And we're going to have biscuits, y'all. Here we go. I'm going to turn this over. And I did that so I could get some of that flour off the bottom. Okay. Now, this is where it comes in. It's really up to you. Any size biscuit. Sometimes we take big ones. I'm using this cutter. I, it just, it's the perfect size biscuit for us. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna dust. There we go. And see, I guess I should have done it on the larger counter that I have, but I didn't know how to set the camera up where it wouldn't fall over. So we're gonna have to work around. I should have moved these uh, sugar and coffee containers. But I'm sure y'all are seeing and getting the gist of it. And I'll tell you what, to give you an idea of how thick I'm going, Let me pull it this way a little bit more. I think I've got it pretty well even. And now we're just going to start cutting. I always put a little bit of flour out. Fold this around. And remember, when you're cutting biscuits, whether you're using a glass or whatever, do not twist. Now see, that's a little thinner for me. You just go down and up. Whatever you do, do not twist. I don't know, though. That's not too thin. I'll cut it right here. Down and up. Because if you don't, and you twist it, it will make for a tough biscuit. All right, there's one. Now, some people would stop just right there, you know, with this many. But actually, you got a whole lot of dough in here. And because I didn't overwork it, I still had a look. See how that got thin? I think I'm going to add that over there. You, you cannot, I promise you, you cannot mess this biscuit up. You, you just can't mess this biscuit up. Let's see, I'm going to pat that one out by hand. I'm sure y'all have seen a lot of people do hand roll biscuits. Biscuits is just easy. All right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it back in. And basically, I'm just working the dough but not heavy-handed. I'm basically just kind of folding it. And we're going to roll it back out. It's a no-fail. Oh, and I meant to tell you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, my sinuses are killing me. Preheat your oven to 450. Now, that's 450 here. Um, at our old homestead, my oven, I know it was crazy, but it was at 430, so you kind of got to judge the temperature, but like I say, 450, because you want to cook biscuits at a high heat. The sooner, the better. They rise faster. Okay, let's move these around. And then when I put them in the oven, I'll get everything cleaned up, and then I'll come back. Let's see. I'm going to slide some more over. I love this. Uh, I don't really like that biscuit. And you're thinking, man, because I like my biscuits to touch but not sit on top of each other. They don't dry that way. So I can get a couple more biscuits in here. So, one more time. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to mark to where y'all can see when it does come out of the oven, you'll be able to see that the ones that I've had to roll out twice, Makes no difference in the world for the results, but I'm going to try to mark them. Now, anybody can do this. So, remember, guys, it's two cups self-rising flour. One cup whole milk, buttermilk, half and half. 
one stick salted, cold salted butter, diced up, and that's it. And 450 degrees on average. Now let's see how many biscuits did we get in here. And what I may do is fry some chicken this evening and have biscuits and fried chicken and some scratch gravy. I'll be able to stick one more. Now, I have made just a couple of biscuits and set this in the fridge and made like dumplings. You know, the next day, chicken and dumplings, you can do that. Of course, you don't need as wet of a dough. You need a little bit more drier dough. But, or you can freeze this. There we go. Put a little bit of flour on here so it doesn't stick. And there you have it. Let's see how many we made. We made three, six, nine. We made 11 biscuits. Actually, we could have got another one in here. But here you go. I don't brush mine with milk or butter. Some people do. Some people don't. Uh, mine will have a little bit of a flour tint to it. Sometimes they don't. So I'll bring you back 450 degrees. It's going to bake about 15 minutes. But I'll clean this mess up. And matter of fact, before I do that, let me just show y'all what I mean by not a mess. I mean, you're going to have some, but not if you would have... Now, see, I had a little bit more because my paper slipped out. But you could you imagine what it would look like, the counter, if I'd have done it all on this counter? So it really does save the mess if you don't let your bag slip out. But anyway, we'll be back as soon as they go in the oven. All right, let's check these biscuits. I think that they're done. Oh, yes. Let me turn that off. I'm going to show y'all the bottom of them. Now, y'all may like y'all's more, but in this house, we like them a little on the soft side. Now, I, let me see if I can slide this over a little bit more. I want y'all to see something. What I was talking about. I did set them to where the ones that I folded and folded. Here's one. And I'll go ahead and go in there. Now see, the bottoms of ours, we like it like this. It's a golden brown. Ooh, that's hot. Here's one of the ones I did. Ooh, mercy, mercy, mercy. Now, I'm going to get a plate. I hate to reach over y'all like that, but I wasn't prepared. All right, let's see if I can move this over some. This is going to be a hot biscuit. All I want to do is just cut it so y'all can see. There it is up close. And then I don't know if you can see the layers in it. Maybe you can. I don't know. I don't know how to shut the autofocus off. So, All right, here we go. Y'all to see the inside. There you go. There's no dough, perfectly cooked, and needs some butter. Personally, I like honey. So I'm going to close this back up and stick it in here. Because at this point, you could really um, let them cool and pull them out and put them in uh, freezer bags. You know, like a large gallon size freezer bag, just kind of lightly uh, freeze them on a cookie sheet for about 10 minutes called flash freezing. Stick them in a gallon size Ziploc bag. And if you want a biscuit, you can grab one, either cut it in half and toast it in a skillet. That's what we like to do on the stove. Or you can wrap it in a wet paper towel in about 10 seconds. It's fresh as if you just, uh, you just baked it. Here's one. Y'all remember that one? I said, I don't think I'm going to keep it, but I will. It's perfectly fine. And they're about, I don't know, an inch, inch and a half thick. Now, I have used a largemouth glass before. I just didn't roll my dough out as much. So therefore, you've got that huge cat head thick biscuit. Um, that's good for chicken and biscuits. But anyhow, literally, this is done in less than three minutes. Baking is 10 to 15, depending on your oven. So I'll recap. It is two cups self-rising flour, one cup milk 
or buttermilk, or half and half, or one cup whole milk with a teaspoon to a tablespoon of vinegar, your choice. Let sit for 20 minutes, and one stick of salted butter. You'll find in this house there's not much that I cook with that I use unsalted butter. I just use salted butter and I just don't add more salt. In the baking, you know, my daughter's a baker and she says, Mom, always use unsalted butter. Mama's 54 years old, I like salted butter. But, Abby, you can do this. And until next time, y'all, God bless. Oh, and if you like this video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. See, I remember to say that. Until next time, God bless you.